Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Trek Yards. He is Commander Coggin. He is Captain Fair. Today we're talking about episode three of season five of Discovery. On week two of season five. On year seven. Um, yeah, this one's called Janelle. 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 Not Janelle. 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 Yeah, that, that word. Anyway. The one with um, the trill. Yes, the trilly one. Stuart, so, what do you think of season five, episode three? I just watched it a minute ago. I thought it was pretty good, actually. I rather enjoyed the... Uh, we've seen that kind of thing happen in DS9 before with the Trill, where it's like one of the hosts... Or people take on the personality of the hosts. Uh, we find out that the Trills can live to be 800 years old. They say it's rare for the symbiote to live that long, but I, I just thought the timing was very apropos. Like, what happened when the symbiote died who would be able to pass on the, the... Well, and they leave the end ambiguous because it, it, it swims away. It, yeah, it does. Well, it said it wanted... To, the, the old lady said it wants to rest and so do I. So I assume it's going to die. <laughs> I cheekily call this one um, Helldivers to the episode because of the bugs. And then she gets the puzzle piece and it's like, I found a sample. It's like, that's pretty funny. Anyway... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this it's it's an interesting episode. It's kind of got some cool stuff in it, and a lot of um, stuff with Saru and um, yeah, President Lady. I thought it was I thought it was good. The interactions with um, Rainier and the crew were interesting, and Tilly as well. I kind of liked that whole thing. Again, Tilly's back to being Tilly, which is awesome. It's it's a it's a fun episode. I gotta say. Not much happens necessarily, but it's it was a ple it was pleasant enough to watch and to see um, Wilson Cruz, I think is his name, Colbert get to you know have fun with a new character, yeah. And oh, he really works out because you see those pictures of him online; he's always like so ripped. It's just, it was just kind of cool that way. So yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, how about you? What did you think of this episode? I thought it was pretty okay. Yeah, in the sense that. You know, I often talk about the cherry on top. There was an absence of any any remote cherry. There was nothing it did particularly great. Mm -hmm. And there was no mm -hmm. special source of any kind. There were several areas they could have. Mm -hmm. But it was reasonably well paced. And for a lot of talking, again, that's good. Um, you certainly don't need the Saru and Dira stuff. Like, you don't need them. And they certainly pull you away from the main story. But at least they are people we know and... They they mean something in the grand schemes. So they're not unwelcome, of course. They just don't add. They're not the best scenes, but they're fine. Grander politics of the Saru stuff is some interesting, not super interesting, but some. Uh, Berm's good. Book's good. Colber steals the show as not Colber. Phenomenal job. Uh, even the Trill stuff is it is good. It's again not amazing, but it's good. Uh, and it's fun to see them. You know they've built a physical set in season three, and now it's the same idea. But now they have the early walls, so it's now the same vibe in a way. But it, you get the sense of I'm in a special zone anyway for the ceremonies, that's fine. But they missed many opportunities to, to sing. Of course, the biggest one I'm going to mention is they had a flashback to the scientists. It was begging for it because the walk and talk is fine, but you realise, oh, we say that they save themselves thousands of dollars every second by not doing it. But had they then cut to an LED wall DS9 set in greys with a Romulan in the, you know, the guy and the Trill who we met we had the we had the, the actor they hired him put him in the grey human scientist a Frankie scientist whatever in a set from TNG and, and have them do something would have elevated it to awesome by not mm. doing it it it's not flat it's just okay you know when yeah when he was talking about that the team that they had assembled and which is a cool the, twist the, I did the like the era I was like oh Sam was right we're gonna get a flashback because you had said you were, we were hoping to get one for, from the TNG era. And I, I told you flat out, you're not going to get that. Uh, but I really thought for a minute that they were going to do it because it would just have felt so natural in that moment when he's describing how they came up with the decision of, you know, like some, one person tried to activate it and yeah. died. And that's not like a cool story. Yeah, there's there's a lot they could have done with that that I think would have actually really added to the story. But well, not just that, but if they had I hate being right. <laughs> but they already hired the two act two actors to play two scientists. If they said there's six, you hire the other four. They could have had a flashback to the rest of the season. It could have been a constant flashback to them discovering the device, like see it from two time periods. Would have been amazing and relatively affordable had it been a season wide arc. 
And maybe the twist at the end could have been that the TNG character who acted for the obelisk, the preserver, whatever, the whatever they call it, I keep, sorry, always a preserver, maybe they, progenitors, maybe they're at the end as like a twist, like they their DNA went to the machine and took it over and they're the baddie. Like, they could have had that wonderful time between two eras. Easy. By not doing it, it's like, okay. And they obviously had some uniforms. They had Brent Spiner's from Picard Season 1 because they obviously raided that prop department. They had his uniform. They had the odd uh, medical uh, 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 shrink uniform from Gaius, Gaius Picard, which they could have... It's like, okay, yeah, it's fine. Scientist, yeah, it's fine. <sighs> I mean, not many other uniforms, but they could have. So that was definitely them not doing the obvious. And it would have and it would have been nice to have then seen the actor who played the original Trill have to see him and Wilson like two sides of a coin. You have him say, have Wilson say in the, the vibe of the other actor or, you know, the, the character saying do this and then it flips straight into a, like almost like walking through one doorway into the second doorway back in the past and it's the same tone of acting. Like, wow, these two did such a good at mimicking each other. I gotta say, I'm glad that the writers have learned their lesson because if this would have been season one or two or th maybe even three, Burnham would have been like, <laughs> I'll take Janelle into me because I only trust me. Um, I, I I like the way that I like, like the way that uh, Culber stepped up and said, you know, I'm used to dealing with that kind of thing, so I'll be able to handle it. So I think it wouldn't have been Burnham either way, because then she wouldn't have been Burnham on screen. I think they always want Burnham to be the key. If you take her out of the equation, it wouldn't have been Burnham as the character. Uh, I, no, it would have been Tilly or Saru had it been not Culber. Um, no, I disagree. I think it would have been Burnham. Like she's always the one that wants to do that kind of thing because she's the only one that's the most important. She's got the most important information, so she's got to be in the person's shoes to da 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 da. But hell, very measured captain this week. A lot of very restrained lines. That said, huge plot hole, which really annoyed me in the end. Uh, they try to beam out because they don't want to mess with the eggs. And they say, "We can't. We're so close to rocks. We can't beam." It's like, well, just step out of the rocks and you can beam. You did it. A minute ago. A minute ago, yeah. So there's zero <laughs> issue. Just, just leg it. Beam. You're ten seconds away, and they entirely forgot that's a giant plot hole because they set up as an easy, no issue thing, and it just it comes. It makes that entire end while lovely as it is. The the the, the theatre of it is like is dumb. It's broken. It's it's it doesn't work in any way really. Had they not used the teleporting, fine, but they did. I like that Janal was like testing them too, like. Um, I want to see how you would treat, you know, a, a, a fellow, another creature, because uh, he was going on this whole thing earlier about we wanted to wait till people were ready to like, we're, you were at peace and <laughs> are you yeah. at peace? I mean, it's eh. like we're at peace. It's like dudes, eh. the breed, they're a big problem. Apparently, they're not at peace. This is stressful time. But it's always stressful time, right? That's, that's the galaxy. Yeah, I thought that was even without the obvious DS Nine sequence, which would have been. So obvious, my goodness. The, the the story that he weaved was great. That the Federation gave... And this had to be then very specifically in Season 7 when the Romans joined the war. Because it wouldn't have been before that. Because the Romans was part of the scientist group. So it was a coalition of right at the end of the war scientists who came together. They did find the truth. Did some bad things as in they killed one of their people. And then, you know... Mega, mega classified, destroyed research. That's really interesting as, as a premise. And it also helps to ground it a lot because if they could find it, non-spore drive, mid-war people, it's not the hardest thing to find. Like, you don't need... I was thinking, like, like you don't need to spore drive from the galaxy or to a different dimension. Like, if they could do it, it's, you know what I mean, achievable. Earlier in the episode, he was... When um, Jet Reno talked to him about Adira's, you know issues dealing with, are going to be going to see gray he was right before that he says these numbers they just and he's, he's scrolling through it so i just love that breakthrough that he had and that like the he was overjoyed that he this could be more important than the mycelial drive and all that and uh rainier just shuts him down until he like calls him out for it i haven't seen him that excited in months well he doesn't shut him down just doesn't encourage it to go further there's a subtle difference there uh and i actually liked a lot there's not much for anybody to do except Burnham book. Really? Really, really. But Stamets, his legacy thing, that really instantly pulled that back in. Like, if he helps find the stuff, if he might be going off the coattails of six other scientists, which did all, all of the work, if he's the one that brings that to modern day, he'll be remembered for that. 
which I, 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 that's a nice through line. I can see him possibly making a bad decision somewhere down the line, saying, No! The science is worth it! <laughs> it's worth it for my legacy! Legacy? I mean, for the history of the universe! I, I see that, I see a pathway there, which works. Yeah. Another other pet peeves that I had. New bridge crew! More people we're not going to know anything about. We got their names. We got, the only one that's back is Bryce. Or Reese. Reese. And, Bryce uh, is gone. And the blonde and then, replacement from last season. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, you'll meet Detmer and I should come later. <laughs> okay, well, they've only been in at the end. <sighs> are, they even... are they doing this on purpose? I, I have no idea. It's like, look, we had a big, we had a wide variety of crew. Look, see? <laughs> it's like, no, stop. I mean, yeah. it, it is, a, I mean, they might have been busy with other work because, of course, they're not getting work on Discovery. But it's a, such a slap in the face to say, you have four bridge officers from season one. We're going to throw them all away, introduce new people, give them some character, very brief character moments, right? But like, holy hell. Did you catch that when they did it, though? It's like, go around the bridge and it's like, seriously? Because <laughs> I, I thought that was a really, really good storyline for him meeting everybody. So we get an actual character. Like, I thought we we're going to have more, obviously, more than 22 words with all of them. But that I thought was going to be a really nice thing for them all to bond in some way and give everybody, the bridge crew, a moment, a real moment. But let's talk about the new second in command. His. Because he got a good, good chunk of time. And I, that was my second favorite plot. What did you think? And, and yeah, what do you take away from that? I really liked that whole aspect. He's a very down like get things done kind of guy and i love how he even said i have a, sh I had a shorthand with my crew there was none of this i read all their profiles and I, <laughs> just tell me something about yourself that's not in your profile in 20 words or less i thought that was kind of hilarious because he's trying to prove a point i think to tilly like i already know what these people are about so 20 words go and then at the end it, it pays off with like yeah this person's good at this this person's good at this Should, need i go on and I, I love her rebuttal, though. It's it's making a connection isn't just about statistics, essentially. And it got him thinking. So I thought I thought the Rainier stuff was really well done. And again, I'm looking forward to seeing more from this character. I think he is uh, going to be fantastic. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good I thought it was a good storyline. I mean, he's very much a Jellico. Mm, yeah. uh, in, in the sense that that's the big funny thing about. And I watched a Red Letter Media review about it recently, like. Everything he does, while not polite, is the right thing to do for the situation. And his all his actions lead to the solution at the end. And he saves Picard on top of it. So he's proven right. He just does not the most friendly guy at doing it. But look at the pressure he had going in. This guy, I kept thinking Tilly's kind of in the wrong here. Sorry. Like, she's used to the most unbelievably open crew, which is not most crews. So she's used to a super odd version of Starfleet that isn't representative of Starfleet. Her Starfleet, but she's in a super whatever. He's doing it more normally, and she's having to. She's pushing like you don't, you know, push and speak freely. I didn't give permission. Like she should respect the authority chain and respect him. Um, and at the end, told him off. Like, let him do his. He, he is older than you, more experienced. Was a captain. You were a cadet. You didn't even graduate from the academy, Tilly. You don't have the experience to, to chastise this guy who's got 20, 30 years more on you plus knows the era and you're on a, you know what I mean, he's like what? Uh, neither yes in the and wrong no. yes and like, no. he wasn't being the most I... friendly but like, let him, at least, him at least a week to do his process and see what yeah. he's doing because to chastise him that instantly is so disrespectful, well, it's kind of crazy I both agree and disagree with you because Michael Burnham mentioned it at the beginning you know, they only saw what we did on Quajan mm -hmm. or whatever or whatever the planet was, Kumau. Um, and they kind of have a sour taste in their mouth about it. So I want you to just kind of, you know, let them know that I made the right choice. Um, I thought, the, I, 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 did, I both agree and disagree with you at the same time. And I thought the same thing going into it um, while I was watching it. But yeah, it's, I can I can agree with both sides of that. But it's like, give him more than a day. Because forcing him on the, his first day to do it their way when he's the captain, who was a captain, like, like give him a week if he's not, you know, um, and like I said, respect's earned. They, you know, except he's a captain and was a captain. He should be respected first. It was just she was out of line and she should know her role better. She's not even like a command officer anymore. She's a lieutenant at the academy. Just felt odd to push that far. Yes and no. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Because um, I thought, you know, 
he did a, he did a good job. So I wouldn't have done his twenty second thing each. But it's also it's also a fun challenge, right? Sell me on yourself in twenty seconds, like that's really you know what I mean. Like that's a very interesting tactic, and he obviously learned enough from them. Um, the only thing I wouldn't give him is that he was so focused on the mission. That's where I lose him. He sh he should have been full full gung ho on the five minutes, and then made a joke about how you get twenty two words if you impress if I if you impress me, have another twenty twenty words. Yeah, which was a funny which was a funny gag with Tilly at the end running out of words. That was pretty funny. And, and and speaking of that, when when the the discovery left the starbase, and there was, and there was a trill, I'm like, you know what, the resale value on discovery must be phenomenal because as much as it's done, it's got very low mileage, <laughs> it doesn't actually travel anywhere. It just ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. that's really so. funny. <laughs> we might have 900 years on the clock, but we've only got 10 light years because we just don't ever go anywhere. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The warp bubble is basically pre yeah. The warp coils must be super pristine. Yeah, I like that. That's that's funny. Um, and it was open on their journey trill. Yeah, it was. Um, a Dominion War mention was nice. Mm -hmm. Again, perfect chance pre to put I'm, in I'm something. Pretty, I'm pretty bold touching his actual date range because the Dominion War is not all of season, all DS9 is only yeah. like two and a half years, which is great. Flashback! Yep. Or I, I just expected like Burnham to kind of be like, I don't know what the Dominion War is, because I'm not she did her research, but... I mean, they've made it pretty clear, like, them oh, being yeah, like... They've caught up. I yeah, they've, they've caught up to the point of their natives now. It's... The, yeah, there's there's no... Which is why it's funny that the new Rainer's like, he learns English from Akla to make an effort to be with a... Like, that. he's really trying. That's a bold... That's a fun thing to do, to learn. Um, that, that could be a, a fun, like, Spock-esque. Like, he's getting things wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a unique twist to take that, and I quite liked that. And a lot for Tilly. I mean, this is really was the Tilly, Rayner, Book, and Burnham, and Trill show. And Jet Rio's there, and she is flat as a as a board. She was just there. <laughs> it's nice to see her back, though. I do like the character, and I do like her attitude. So just knowing that scene, it was just anybody could do that, and they did add it as an odd scene because they're like, "Oh, they're back." Oh, that was it. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious when you see it, when you watch the scene, but the Saru politics bit the amount of looks he's giving his fiance it's like you can't have two people on the council with relationship the, the vote's obviously going to be judged like are you voting together i know he's new to that side of it and, he, and neither were thinking it but it obviously comes across that way but the alien and it's been said online already feels like an evolution of the tng snake people look great yeah the sealer yeah really really yeah. nice visual vibe cool stuff well, the only thing at the end, uh, obviously, I noticed it was Maul, Maul right away, um, just with the, the hair under the thing, and then put a little tag, an Apple tracking tag on, on uh, Dira. So, yeah, they're going to be able to follow them, and uh, then they still touch, because I was like, the whole episode, like, where's Maul and Locke? If they show up, they're going to start, like, maybe blasting Trill away. But no, the, the, the Trill security forces are sufficient. It's like, really? Are they... Yeah, and that I thought was was you needed something at the end. That wasn't quite enough for me. I would have liked to have another little moment, but that that's fine. But certainly, I was left thinking, at, you know, minute fifty one or fifty five. How 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 are they gonna like? They, there's no second obelisk. There's no other clue. There's no there's no breadcrumb to follow. Okay, at least they had a way. Although that said, I I felt a little bit uncomfortable that. I, I get that, you know, yes, this, this line of clues was set up to find the thing, but if Discovery gets destroyed, and let's say, it, we don't know what happened, but let's say that the host died of natural causes, the symbiont went and, and entered the pool of destiny and died, and the information's gone forever, it's like, but you can't just give it to the first person, because if they die, that's it, right? Y you know, that was a bit... Uh, that was one of my biggest problems that I mentioned earlier in this review. Like, what happens if this symbiote died without passing this information on to anybody? The trail would just end. It's just so convenient that it happened within the symbiote's lifetime, you know? Well, I would assume that they would then have told somebody if I'm if I'm actually dying, they would give the information to another person. I mean... Possibly. They would yeah. know they're almost dying. In the event dying. of my death. That yeah, like, death. yeah, just, you know. But, all, but I don't know if they necessarily, the scientists necessarily ever wanted it to be found. It was a if it was Dorton versus it needs to be found right like so you know but it's just odd to, to to like a person a person will die will die 
just seemed all very convenient to me, and I was like, oh, okay, well, at least it wasn't a Dax, it was a Bix. <laughs> um, so yeah, there you go. Also, we got Adira and Gray. They talked and talked and talked again. I realized they were both happy, and they should they still be friends. But yeah, that's it. It's, it's, yeah, it was yeah. very standard drama. Mm -hmm. yeah, it absolutely was. Like I said, it was a very okay episode. They could, they missed a few opportunities to go above that. Well, I will commend them. Actually, we, we'd said this about the trailers. The fight in the canyon thing. Aim got it's over and done with. Wasn't as bad as it could have been, and it was actually handled in a way that was never dull. We were both worried in the trailers. Cool. It was fine. They thought they cloaked was fine. Like that, it was okay. It was alright. Like cool. We got past that. Good job. Yeah. yeah. What happens next? I don't know. I don't know. Hard to speculate. I can't, I, I'm missing the lot next time on. They used to do. Like I don't feel I don't feel teased about next week. I feel okay. You know what I mean? Like like there's I don't know anything next. So it's like well, yeah I don't know. Hmm. But anyway, guys, what do you think is going to happen next? Comment down below. Let us know also what you thought about this this episode and this review of ours. If we hit anything you want to talk about or anything we missed, comment down below. Make sure. Oh. And if you want to send a message to our children to let us know, what, to let them know what you thought of our episode, then go to your nearest Trill, give them the message, tell them to stay for as many lifetimes as possible, and then in 900 years, have them go to our kids and tell us how, what I thought of this episode with a super chat or a super thanks if you'd like. Or you can save that entire timeline progression and just super chat and super thanks right now. Super chat and lives, super thanks in this video. I'll let you go back to your part of the, the live, the, the end bits, but then I'll jump back in once you've finished. Subscribe, hit like, do the things. Notify yourself with the bell. That's it. And if you want to support us directly, uh, pay PayPal, one-time donation, trackers at hotmail.com, Patreon, the monthly service, or join the channel monthly as well. Each and all helps out tremendously. And uh, let's do what we do here. That's right. And we love doing it for you guys. So anyway, until next time, he is Commander Cockings. He's got a fairly. Bye, guys. Bye, Reddy. <laughs>